Welcome to the Tome of the Elder Dragons. We are here singing about bards. No, okay, anyway. Welcome to the Tome of the Elder Dragons. What's that? Cha cha cha. Cha cha cha. Tear to my eye. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, welcome to the Tome of the Elder Dragons. I am the uh, Lore Weaver. We are over here with the Tome Tome Keeper. Keeper. That's right, Tome of the Tome of the Tome. And then the Beast Beast Master. master. And uh, today. It's all about a good story being told. It's all about that poetic, poetic phrasing, or the, that, that just that slight tic tac of an insult, or the, the the tuning, or the music, or the inspiration. We are talking about bards oh. in Amaria, bards in general. Um, when we talked about the barbarians, I, I was talking about how the barbarian to me, I never played the barbarian growing up in my gaming uh, because it was just, I felt like it was a one track smash and grab kind of character. The bard got a lot of flack in the early days because it was uh, not the utilitarian or the uh, powerhouse that it is today. It was more of a. Um, uh, uh, it's kind of an in between. Yeah, it was, it was starting class. to find its own place. Yeah, it was starting to find its own place, but it was like it was a, it was a storyteller, but people weren't really seeing it as a big, cool, scary class, you know. So, tell me what you think of bards. Uh, so, the, the interesting thing to think about bards is that they're uh, they're sort of become this default portrayal of them as these uh, troubadours that wander the earth. Troubadour, and, yeah. yeah. Troubadours that wander the earth and kind of just like perform and are very flamboyant and wear lots of bright clothes and they're constantly trying to get with various uh, patrons of patrons the bar, of per se. The bar yes, and yes, yes. Uh, you know they're, they're always yes. Um, yes. going around being very flirtatious and uh, uh, obnoxious and um, <laughs> yeah. that definitely can be a way that a bar can go and that is a lot of fun but there is also a lot to the, the side of them where they are lore keepers. Yeah. They are storytellers. They are that which pass down they knowledge. They keep the traditions alive. Right. They because keep the songs alive. A they lot of the, the, the towns of the, the boonies, the only way that they're going to learn about what's going on is when a bard shows up and tells them stories and songs and ballads about what is happening in the rest of the world. So what's interesting about this is we talked about the D&D movie. Um, and in the D&D, the newest D&D movie with Chris, Chris Pine playing a bard, that was a really interesting way to see a bard played because the he, a lot of the times he was always like, come on guys, come on. Like he was like the inspiration. He was always like changing moods. Like just yep. he'd sing a little song when the barbarian was down and all of a sudden the barbarian is feeling better about things. And so, and, and not just that, but bards can also be quite deadly. Yeah. I mean, uh, speaking from like, you know, mechanically speaking, bards are uh, a, Kind of jack of all trades, literally all, all all puns to the to the feature there, uh, class that can do a little bit of everything. But um, I have always thought of them as a spellcaster who's good at interacting with various ability checks, good at finding out little bits and bobs when it comes to lore and otherwise. But as always, bards are some of the most versatile. Of, of the classes, in my opinion, and I love them for that. You can you can quite literally, via subclasses and otherwise, play a bard that is pretty much the most uniquely craftable and customizable yes. thing. It could be any kind of thing under the sun, and I adore that because the, the stereotypes of bards are as far-reaching on the internet as you can possibly look, but they are also some of the most limiting because all of the bards that I have seen uh, played amongst many friend groups amongst people at conventions, people yeah. at, uh, you know, uh, 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 live games are some of the most interesting characters I've ever seen and rare to never fall into these sort of uh, um, thematic ruts, so to speak, as, as just They're the, definitely the, the wandering muse troubadour la, that has always la. got a twirly mustache and playing the liar at the at the side oh, of the, the tavern. The, the, the flute. The, the dandelion Yaskier the, the, the character. Yaskier yeah. or, or, you know, Volofamp Gadarm and, and things like that. Like, there are hundreds of thousands of ways to play any class, of course. But bards, I find, take that number to the millions. And it's it's wondrous to see what people come up with. I've seen bards that only played the spoons. 
The only instrument they played were a pair of spoons. That's actually pretty and brilliant. It was a goblin bard. I'm a little jealous. It was a goblin bard made scrumples, and they only played with a pair of spoons on you ever, their You ever played with spoons? And it was the greatest they're actually, thing like, ever. They're amazing. They're amazing. I, <laughs> I love it. I, I played with spoons before. Like, I'm not very good at it, but it's, it's amazing. But I, I've always bards. seen bards as uh, sort of the collectors of the world's knowledge, and that kind of leads into why they're so good at so many things. Yeah. They're, and in a different way than mages. They're worldly. They, they, yeah. They've learned things by traveling so much, by exploring different cultures and talking to different people, They're gathering seeing stories, stuff. seeing things. Indiana Jones, actually, I think, would be a bard because of just how yeah. worldly and experienced well, honestly, and just good oh at many things. Oh, my God. I've never looked right? at Indiana Jones so, as a bard. You know, when, you, when you think about well, bards, that's, that's the kind of thing. He's a professor. He knows a lot about various subjects. He's very good at athletics, but also at, like, acrobatic kind of thing. He knows it. Yeah. He's very charismatic when he needs to be. Like, that is a bard. Sleeps yep. with someone every film. I mean, yeah, it's you know, like, you can throw that in there, but like, James Bond would be another and we're kind back of good to the example. Rock. Of, uh, <laughs> James Bond, the right. bard. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I, mean, I, I think that bards are just as versatile in, in portrayal as they are in their mechanics. And we wanted to create something different as well. Like, as we said with the other classes we've talked about, um, there are a plethora of different classes out there you can play. Um, different versions and flavors and tones, the bard being a unique one for sure. Uh, but we wanted to try something very different with our bards. Um, and something that hasn't really been put out there in 5th edition before. Of course, the, uh, the, the two that we picked were the uh, the, your the favorite. College of the Nightingale. College of the Nightingale, your favorite, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. We'll get to that one in a second. And then uh, my mine is uh, the College of Time Bard, my favorite, because I love messing with time and the philosophies on each. But let's touch on this College of the Nightingale. Tell us, College how, of did the this, Nightingale. how did we come about doing this? Uh, you know? Well, so I, as it happens, I'm a, I'm a very big proponent and fan of the sea shanty. The shanty uh, of the sea. There, there is a lot of of history and and culture within there and it's always fascinated me and one of the things about the bard is that they're often or almost always portrayed as using a musical instrument and other than the ones that do speeches there isn't mm. really anything that does purely sort of acapella or vocal style and they also tend to lend themselves to, like I said, being more versatile. They don't really have a, a niche. You don't really have like your dwarven battle hymn bard or your um, you know, folk song. Bard, yeah, they all just kind of metal sing. bard. Yeah, they all just yeah. kind of do everything. So the idea of the College of the Nightingale was that I really just wanted to have a bard who focused on sea shanties and the concept and design space that that would allow for. Uh, sea shanties are a type of music that is designed to help keep timing and momentum going in a ship crew as they accomplish various tasks. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of took that idea and said, well, okay, well, how could we apply that to an adventuring party? It's brilliant. And the idea was if we take their bardic inspiration and allow it to be more of a communal thing, so they can split the die out into yeah. D4s or put it in a pool in the table, and then while they maintain their singing, anybody who then needs it can grab it at the, t at the time yeah. rather than giving it Even to somebody and then love having it uh, not be used. Adore that mechanic beyond, like... And it's actually functional, you know? Uh, it's, it's really handy. I mean... I, I personally, having seen uh, a few players uh, uh, do some playtests with the uh, the Nightingale Bard, the the creativity in having a communal inspiration die and just saying, "All right, the four of you, take it when you need it." It's the look so on good. people's faces when they're like, "Oh wait, I don't have to, you don't have to choose one of us." And he's like, "No, just stay within sixty feet of me. Let me keep singing. If you need it, yeah. you take it." it there, there was just something magical at, at watching people go. Oh yeah, yeah, and then <laughs> wonderful. Thank and you. And when you get someone like <laughs> when you get someone like Mark Mir or you or oh, anybody yeah. that actually can sing a, a shanty, that has them like almost like on repertoire, like Sam, and you guys are starting to sing these shanties. Hey, hey, hey! And everyone's singing along at the table, and the you're like, "Oh my table. god!" And then people are like, grabbing gets... D4s and rolling it, and it just changes the entire game. I can't forget play. the. I uh, can't forget also. Uh, wondrous boon to them. They can learn a few different kinds of uh, druid spells. Yeah, well, uh, I wanted to give yeah. them access to spells that control water and air because the idea is you're probably going to be on a ship a lot of the time and you should have some level of control. And there's something thematic about singing songs of the sea to then manipulate the sea and the sort of the themes around it. Mm. And and I, I really enjoy being able to kind of go through a bunch of sea shanties and like 
underline certain parts of it and say, okay, when I cast this spell, I'm going to sing this part of the shanty. And there's something really just kind of, you you really just feel like you're really getting getting thrown into the world and the environment. You were talking about, so Adam, you were talking about um, how you loved the the D4 split down and how how it's a communal pool and how people behave. I think that that outside of the box thinking is what makes this bard unique compared to many other bards in the world. And that is part of our design philosophy here in Amaria, which leads us to our College of Time bard. Yeah. Because this one is, I think, really off the beaten path, like right off the the beaten path. The the, the College of Time, uh, so preface is that um, time manipulation is a big thing in Amaria due to various uh, aspects. And it's not magical. It's magical. That's what's important. Well, magic can It's magical, but it is sort of magic adjacent. Yes. Um, in it, the way we try to approach any type of chronomancy or, or time magic is we want it to feel like you are manipulating time without getting into the like real problems of yeah. what can happen and how things can get out of control and it's way too powerful and there's all this other old school so chronomancy. It, yeah, so it's these, it's these little yeah. things you can yeah. do that are very very tiny adjustments that can have big profound impacts if used in the right time. With so, the right timing. Timing, exactly. Yeah. So with the College of Time Bard <laughs> I was, was going to do the same thing. No, I love it. With the College uh. of Time Bard uh, they can use their Bardic Inspiration die to manipulate initiative or the casting of spells. Yeah, so let's... This is your favorite thing. Yeah, so let's talk... So call to action is the initiative shift. And the initiative is, is a construct of time in real life. It is. It is an order in which we watch the flow of action uh, take effect on the battlefield. In essence, it's all in one six-second spurt anyway, but it is it is still a an actual flow of time. And so by manipulating that flow of time with your bardic inspiration, you can literally roll your inspiration to increase or decrease subjects on the initiative track. The, the construct being that wherever you are in the initiative, the, the people that have gone before you are in the past and the people that will be going ahead of you are the future. And so by grabbing a subject from the past or a subject from the future and rolling your initiative or rolling your body inspiration and modifying their role on that chart, you're either bringing them below you, in which case you are putting them into the past and removing their future economy, or you're bringing them from the past to the future after they've done what they've done and giving them a second round of economy, which is seems like it could be super busted, but really it's not. No, I mean, in, in, in obviously much like all you know, uh, great things within the, uh, the system. It still involves rolling dice. Yes. So and, I mean, you could fail. Right? There, there's a chance that you know you're rolled too. The and, dice and you giveth know and they taketh away. Exactly. And <laughs> well, maybe that maybe that won't let you have one of your you know enemies skip their turn this round because two's not enough. But it also might let your friend go just a bit above them to sneak in one little final thing to Which finish off crucial. an enemy. Just, just before you know, just before before they go. So it's all, it's got a lot of great yeah, legendary know, action. To get rid of all that. It's not that different than a normal use of bardic inspiration, where you're like, oh man, I really need like an extra two or three on this to hit, and you still roll a one. Like it, you yeah. know, it, it's not that much different, yeah, and so yeah. it follows chance, the same balance. Chance makes things fun, because it makes things uncertain. And then there's the the call to aptitude, which is where we really play with spellcraft. Oh, yeah. and this could be this, this, great. this has been this has been previously discussed as like it could be abusable and we've seen situations where it's not abusable to the end game but it is definitely a change in your thought process and some people who play magic users who have played this before who have given bardic inspiration to it and explain what they can do they still don't grok the concept other people get it immediately like when luke gygax got Mm -hmm. it he immediately knew exactly when and how to use that to enhance his turn to be a maximum alpha striker against the boss and so uh, call to aptitude is that you can take the bark inspiration and you have to remove the idea that it's a die you roll. It's the die itself that is the inspiration. It's a point. It's a point. And when you spend the inspiration, you literally just spend the point to increase, should have made it also decrease. So that's the, this is how we design. And increase the uh, casting time of a spell. And, and fifth edition has casting times. What are the casting times? It's uh, you have a reaction, bonus action, action or minute, and then on and yeah. to, and then all, all the way that. up to like 24 yeah. hours. That's right. And so, and so this is your all up to 24 hours goes down to a minute. Your minute goes to an action. Your action goes to a bonus action. Bonus action goes to a reaction, and reaction just does it just repeats itself because it's as fast as you can go. So bonus action being healing word 
with this with this special uh, time manipulation device or uh, inspiration. When you spend it, you can now healing word at reaction speed. Now I'll let you think about that for a second. Who's listening and watching? <laughs> what changes in the flow of your battle if you can healing word at reaction speed? It's not broken. It's just. It's fine. A bit of a changer. It's, it's a bit finite. of a changer. And I mean, there's even occasions you could fire off a bunch of fireballs in the same round if you've got a quick and sorcerer, but that's okay. Then you have no more fireballs left and you're completely drained, and that's the first fight. Yeah, and it's, it's still going to follow the, the, the rules of, uh, of, of spellcasting to, you know, to a degree, but like it, it, even even with the rules of spellcasting, of, you know, you, you may have to make sure well, at least one spell is a cantrip and, then, and the other is a leveled spell, that applies for actions and bonus actions. Interesting thing. It doesn't exactly for reactions. Yep. So you can do something very interesting like That's a right. reaction healing word somewhere someone. Bonus action. Use your bonus word. action to, you know, call up a call up a shillelagh or something, then use your action to uh, cast like a like a fireball. And that technically could all be in one single round, which yeah, it does get a bit nutty. However, you are using up that was, that's bardic a very inspiration round. It, you're using up bardic inspirations that you could be giving to people to increase their chances of hitting or doing a saving throw or an ability check, and instead you are using that to cause this right. uh, this, this speed up of, of, of spell casting. Which uh, even even through uh, all of our testing, it gets wacky, but it doesn't ever. It's not In my mind, it doesn't ever get to a point where you're like, this is busted. It just gets really intriguing at the possibilities of what you You feel do. like you're actually manipulating time. Yeah. And then speaking of, we should talk quickly a bit about uh, charming, chrono charm. Yeah. This so is, this was, is the other actually really unique gonna thing. I going to bring that up in that... Um, oh, man, we've actually got exhaustion to talk about, too. Well, well, one of the things about bards that is uh, fairly controversial is their counter charm feature because uh, it is kind of considered to be a bit of a dead feature because it... The action economy required to use it sort of makes it an, a less than optimal choice. You have to spend an action and then you give advantage to everyone trying to get rid of like charms and frightened frighten conditions. Cash, yeah. um, and there are just other things that are probably you gotta going to be. Maintaining you got to maintain, and there's probably better things you can do. So, one of the things we wanted to do was try to fix that and make it feel better to play with. So, with the College of Time Bar, we made it uh, a reaction. And which we also changes the game entirely. Changed it, and we also allowed it to be used on things that can adjust your movement speed, like, like haste slow, and slow haste, and things like yeah. that. Um, and then with the College of the Nightingale, we kind of kept it the way it was, but we improved its potency with the number of uh, allies who assisted you with their reactions. Right. So, so we it, call it call and response. Yeah. So you would do the call, and that would be the normal counter charm. And then the, as more and more of your party members would respond with the with the the proper shanty response, you would improve it to uh, the advantage to having it let it be instantaneous, and then all the way up to it just works. Yep, uh, effectively like your crew joining in on a on a, a song together, which was again just as, as as a quick as you've touched on that for for a moment, I, the the role play and mechanical marriage together of the College of the Nightingale is is something that just I absolutely adore for that fact. And and the fact that we have, you know, as you were saying, like taken this uh, this already existing bard feature that not yeah. a lot of people find uses for, and in both of these subclasses, taken that and and give it given it not just this mechanical Interesting ways use, to do it. But this RP flavor as well. Yeah. Chef's kiss, like it's it's wonderful that we've all all been able to actually utilize that as something that uh, every single bard player should have some new and fun uses for their counter charm now. <laughs> yeah. So. And then uh, the the other the one other thing that the College of Time bard that I know I, I guess yeah, we, yeah, I love is, this. Uh, the fact that at, at the high end, at the, the high end levels, you can play, start playing a song which will age those who hear it. Which fail to say, <laughs> yeah. um, mechanically, with the, they just gain levels of exhaustion, and that's sort of to represent the fact that their which, bodies are aging forward in time at a rapid pace. Yeah, exhaustion is an is, a, is an aspect of the design realm in fifth edition that is now just starting with this new six. Yeah, yeah, stuff. It, it's, it's been one of those things starting. that always sat there, and the only things they really did with it was make it a penalty for using a feature, but now. There, there, there's so much more that you can do with it, and that was one of the things that we tried to tap into quite uh, vicariously. Yeah. So there you have it. That is our brief rate breakdown on the Bard for 5th edition um, in the Marian universe. And I think 
If you're interested in what you heard, the construct of time, or the idea of call and response, singing along, or if you just want to sing a sea shanty and get some in-game benefits from it, this is for you. So thank you guys for listening. We're going to be back with more, many, many, many more classes until we've covered everything in our book. Uh, thanks for listening along, and we'll talk to you soon. 